Staten Island. Hey, I know when you're thinking of the Big Apple, you think Crooklyn, the Boogie Down, QB, and the city. But not Shaolin. It's the forgotten borough. But that's all right. We like it like that. Staten Island's always been considered the silent partner to New York City. Until now. Today, there are millions of Staten Islanders living on and off the island. And if you're lucky enough to know one, you're probably always asking yourself, why are they so cool? Easy, they're Staten Islanders. But this ain't something new. People have wanted to be down with us since the beginning. What's that? You don't believe me? How about I school you on a little history lesson about this magnificent island? And guess what? We're gonna start this one from the beginning. Fifty thousand years ago, some wandering glaciers from the North Pole creeped down. They chiseled a heaven and earth known today as Staten Island. The first known Staten Islanders were the Lenape Indians, simpletons who lived in complete peace and ignorance for thousands and thousands of years. But all that shit changed in 1524, when the greatest explorer of all time, Giovanni de Verrazzano, sailed into New York Bay to become the first civilized man to lay eyes on this magnificent paradise. Oh, and in case you were wondering, yeah, he's a paisan. The island remained with the Lenapes until 1604, when Henry Hudson, who knew a good thing when he saw it, snatched it up for the Dutch. He dubbed it Staten Island out of respect for the Dutch parliament. Hudson then kindly asked the Lenapes to leave, but they didn't. So he whacked the entire tribe and vicked the land. Now Henry and his crew are in the right to be the next Staten Islanders. As they say, what goes around comes around. The British forces who kept their eye on this prized land for 60 years moved in and made the Dutch an offer they couldn't refuse. But they did. So the British came in and slapped them up. They were so overjoyed by the score, they referred to the island as the jewel on their pinky ring. Now Staten Island remained with the Limeys for over a century until 1776 when we kicked their ass out and formed Americans. All bitter about losing, some English jerk off on the last ship leaving fired his gun into a crowd of newly minted Staten Island Americans. This went down in history as the world's first drive-by shooting. Now with all the Euro trash finally out of here, Staten Island became low key, filled with a bunch of rednecks and dirt farmers until 1898, when we partnered up with Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, and the Bronx to form New York City. What started as a good thing turned real bad in 48, when the other boroughs, who were always jealous of the island's splendor, plotted to open the Fresh Kill landfill. They told us it would only be a temporary solution to New York's trash problem. Today, it's the fucking largest man-made creation on the face of the earth. On a happier note, in 64, Man Island did the borough good as they abused some Mexicans to win the Little League World Series. Also in that year, the Verrazano Bridge was finally done, named after Johnny Verrazano. You remember him. Connecting the island to Brooklyn, it started a massive population boom that makes Staten Island what it is today. I bet you all think Staten Islanders are just a bunch of guidos. Smooth, good looking Italian men. You girls know what I'm talking about. Problem is, it ain't like that. We got all types here. 